Thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. I uh, appreciate it for our informational session about uh, the referendum on Tuesday. Coming up quick. <clears throat> I do some introductions here before we uh, go through the presentation, whether we're planning for our students' future. In attendance with us, we have Matt Keel, middle school principal, Pam Schuster, elementary school principal, Sean Rood, high school principal, Sue Coppice, uh, superintendent, and Sam Wolfold, business manager. So we've got the all-star crew here tonight for you. My name is Andrew Deer. I am not a uh, employee of the school district. I have been in three different referendum committees throughout this entire process. So I thought I have kind of a unique background. Uh, I am also an alderman in the city. So I have kind of a different perspective as well. So if you have questions relating between the two, feel free to ask questions as we go. Uh, but let's go ahead and let's get started. Great. Your little background noise, sorry. Uh, our agenda for this evening, we're gonna talk about the process we went through in those different committee meetings and how we came to the referendum. We're gonna talk about the two different questions we have on the ballot on April 5th. Uh, there are two separate questions for their two completely different things. And we'll talk about the difference we, differences between the two of them and why we have the two different questions. So there's an operational referendum question and a facilities referendum question. And we will talk about how it impacts you guys. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask them as we go. You don't have to wait until the end. So let's talk about the process. It was a collaborative effort. Uh, we started actually in the fall of 2019, before the pandemic, evaluating different aspects of what needs to be done for an athletic complex. We looked at all of the opportunities here at Morrissey, right here, as well as moving the facilities to the school. We looked at the safety aspects at both locations, and we really came to consensus that if money needs to be put in, we would move the facility. So that's where we started, was with that. Um, and then we added in, company called Hoffman, where they evaluated the entire district, all the buildings, everything that would need to be done across the board. They talked to every staff member, got their suggestions and opinions. They talked to committee. And so as a committee, we walked through every different one of the schools. We got to see every aspect and kind of behind the scenes of how the schools operate and what needs to be done. Um, and then in October, we kind of put all of that information together and came up with our recommendations. We actually started with the facilities referendum at almost $40 million worth of uh, improvements that we need to be seen, but because of the implication on taxpayers, we, we had a level that we wanted to get to, and that's how we got to the 19.3 for this facilities referendum. So we'll kind of walk through that a little bit as well. So the operational refer referendum and the facilities referendum, I've mentioned that a couple of times, and like I said, they're two different questions. They're both yes, no questions, so they're completely separate. The operational referendum is specifically that, it's for the operating of the district. It has nothing to do with the buildings, nothing to do with the facilities. It is specifically to operating the district as a whole. Um, paying for programs, giving opportunities to the students, those sorts of things. The facilities referendum, on the other hand, is for the structure of the, the district. It's the buildings, athletic complex, <coughs> drives. You'll see that we have a, a plan as part of the referendum to improve the uh, traffic flow around the elementary and middle school for pick up and drop off. So that's the difference between the two different referendums. Why don't we just increase our revenue? Why don't we just make the budgets bigger, right? Why, why do we have to even come to a referendum? Unlike being a alderman, we can't just say, all right, we need to spend this amount of money, so let's just spend this amount of money and then the city can just raise your taxes. A school district doesn't work that way. In order for the school district to spend more money, they have to ask the public for more money. The state gives a certain amount of money towards the budget, and then anything above and beyond that that needs to be spent needs to come from the community. About eight years ago, the state did a, big bu a bunch of budget cuts where they took back a lot of the money that was given to districts. Children's actually done a really, really good job over the years of staying under the average spend per child statewide. So they're actually very physically conservative, but it comes to a point where the state keeps giving the same amount and all this inflation, everything's going up, we're all experiencing it. There's, there's no more money to, to continue operating the programs we have. So that's where we come to the operational referendum. And that's why the district needs to ask for more money to continue to operate as they have been over the years. Actually, there's 90% of districts within the state of Wisconsin over the last five years has asked for one of these types of referendums. There's what, 26 school districts 
26 school districts on April 5th will be asking for uh, operational. So we're not the only ones that are doing it. So let's talk a little bit more about that operational referendum. Again, it's to maintain current programs, activities, and services. Like talk about the de decreased aid or a flat aid from the state where they're not increasing the amount of uh, dollars per student that they're giving to the school districts, even as costs go up. The, the city has to supplement, and that's where the referendum question comes in for the operating referendum. Costs of the districts have increased over 10% over this time frame without any additional funds. So the referendum question for the operating will be over a five year period. It's not a forever type of question. It's just to, to increase operating uh, revenue limits for a five year period. And it's again, to maintain current programs that are offered. We'll talk about some of the things that are offered right now that could get cut uh, as part of if the referendum would fail. So you can see the dollar amounts here for the next school year in two years and three, four and five years, the different dollar amounts. And again, the oper operational referendum question authorizes the district to exceed the revenue limit that is given to them by the state by these amounts for these years. After five years, we don't know. The state might be changing the revenue limits. Will they get more money towards the districts? <clears throat> and then this, this wouldn't have to be an issue in five years. But nobody can predict the future. So in five years, this would have to be reevaluated. This is just to continue as we are right now. So some impacts of what could happen if this operational referendum would fail. Uh, elimination of JD2 athletics or freshman athletics. They're just calling it JV2 now at, at a conference level. So that's why it's called JV2. Uh, reduction in AP, advanced placement and dual credit classes. Very important for not only students who plan on going to college, but students that plan on going to technical school. Uh, AP classes are something that my daughter, who's a senior, has taken big advantage of and helped her get to uh, she's going to go to school in DC next year. And in these AP classes, this advanced placement program has really allowed her to take the programs she wants to to learn more about her future career and get into the school she wants to. The dual credit classes are ones if, if a student uh, takes some dual credit classes, they can actually get credit at Fox Valley Tech as well as credit in high school. There's a student that's graduated from high school and also graduated from Fox Valley Tech on the same day. Same year. In the same year. Same year. Because of the dual credit classes because they're already getting college credit and they find out things that they want to do for their career by having these opportunities. I know there's a, a girl in my daughter's class who actually took some dual credit classes and found out, oh, that's not the career I want to do. She was able to figure that out in high school already because she had those opportunities. Elimination of the SHARE program, students helping, accepting, relating, and empowering uh, program at the high school. Reduction in physical education opportunities for all students includes swimming at the elementary school, functional fitness at the middle school and elimination of high school electives. Now that doesn't mean that swimming pool isn't being used, it just, there wouldn't be money in the budget for the elementary school kids to have swimming classes within the school day. Question. Yeah. So is the, the reason we're looking at getting rid of, not getting rid of whatever, reducing, removing um, those things because you're gonna reduce teachers, you're gonna reduce, like where's the cost savings in saying, nope, we're not going to have share anymore, or so, we're not going to have swimming. Yeah. So as we go through the process, um, we look specifically at program reduction, and then based off of those program reductions, and then based off of um, what happens within our staff as far as um, retirements or resignations, that's how we will make those determinations on which staff would be impacted. So do you have like a number of teachers then that you would be not until we get through our whole process based off of, so like we might have a teacher um, <clears throat> who currently, it, these courses are above and beyond anything right. we have to teach. Right. So we may have a teacher right now who's teaching one of these courses who will not be teaching um, in the English course that needs to be taught. Right, so you're, you're saying no more through attrition, just retirements. That's this will impact staff. Will this impact teachers? Okay. And yes. Okay. But you don't have like a number. I can't tell you an exact number right now. Okay. 
and like the athletics, is that just paying the coaches then, or is that for well, that's paying our coaches? Um, that's their transportation to and from games. Okay. Um, that's um, uniforms, officials, event workers, okay. event workers. Yeah. Okay. Could you up just up the cost of the students that are going out for athletics to cover that? The athletic side of it strictly? No, it wouldn't cover the cost. The, the busing has changed. The, the cost of busing has gone up. Oh, and, and this year, it's going to be $80 every time the bus leaves campus. Right. Yeah. I mean, it's because I, mean, like I, I did friends. We have friends that kids go to school in Kakana and they pay like $2,000 for their kids to play sports. So to say that you couldn't <laughs> cover the cost, I don't know if that's. I, th I think it would be really people's willingness probably wouldn't be there. But even when you have, like, you're talking busing, too, you have a lot of the athletic events that coincide with JV1 and varsity, too. So to completely eliminate seems maybe a little excessive or over the top. Or No, and, and the reason, if you, and as Andrew talks to it, and I'm sure you've seen the flyers, too, is when we looked at um, what do we currently offer our students above and beyond that does not need to be offered per requirements. Uh, we were not willing to say, okay, we're going to cut just, we're gonna take it all out of this one area because we value every single experience our kids have. So whether our students are athletes, whether it's academics, whether it's agriculture, whether it's the arts, and whether it's from the littles to our highest, our, our 12th graders, we, we looked across the whole area, not willing to just deplete a single tent. Mm -hmm. But you will see, I mean, some- I'll wait until you're done and then I'll have more questions. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. And, and I'll just, for reference, uh, my daughter also was on the dance team the last four years. And that used to be a school-sponsored sport. Yep. It is no longer a school-sponsored sport, so we as parents pay for everything. Right. And that might have cost the district four to $5,000 a year based on just a little bit of transportation and coaching, and that was cut. So I, I get where you're coming from, and it, it's, you know, sometimes it's those hard to, hard uh, choices. Other district-wide impacts, uh, reduction in music opportunities for the same reason that Sue was talking about, where teachers will be allocated somewhere else uh, for fifth grade band, individual lessons. They'd be teaching a class instead of having time for kids to come in for individual lessons, technology and instru instruction experiences, computer programming and in-classroom support. <coughs> as well as there'll be increased class sizes, bus rides will be longer and not no longer be limited to an hour. And obviously, like we talked about support staff reductions. Did you have any other questions on the operating? No. The referendum? Mm -mm. no. Okay. So the facilities referendum, again, two different questions. The first one was operating, yes, no question. Facilities re referendum, yes, no question. So elementary and middle school, why are we looking to update them? Um, we're looking to not negatively impact our youngest learners anymore. Things that, that are negatively impacting them right now um, are things that were not addressed with the 2001 referendum, which was when the high school was built. Uh, and some of the other improvements were done. That, that, there was nothing done at the elementary school at that time. There are sound transmission issues. I don't know if you've been in the elementary school during the day, uh, but if you are in one classroom, you can hear students and teachers four classrooms away. And part of that is that the school was built 50 years ago as an open concept building. Yeah. That, that's the way they had planned on buildings to be, but in between the classrooms are, they're basically gym partitions. That's what's in between the rooms right now. Uh, there might be a classroom with one or two outlets in the entire classroom. And now with every student having a Chromebook, it's hard to charge a Chromebook when you've got one or two outlets in the entire classroom. So there, there's, it's a very outdated and things just need to be <coughs> refreshed, basically gutted and redone. Um, and 92% of the elementary classrooms are actually smaller than the benchmark standard for modern classroom sizes. So about 4,000 square foot shortfall right now in square footage wise for the amount of students that are in that school. Another part of the referendum is the pickup and drop off at the elementary middle school. Has anybody had the experience of using Circle Drive? Keep your hand up if you've enjoyed that experience. Of using Circle Drive. Yeah, exactly. If you've been there, you know. So we're looking to address site traffic and flow issues. 
Um, safety concerns with vehicles and pedestrian traffic, so many cars lined up, so many people trying to run in and out. Um, and, and there's not enough capacity right now to, to handle the high traffic loads during the start and the end of the school day. And we'd obviously like to improve the, the, the safety and security of the site as well. So here is a mock-up of what the proposed plan would be for the uh, changing of, we'll call it the site flow. There would be a creation of a new driveway at the, is it the west, west end of Court Street or the west end of the property would come in. This is the old middle school football field. This would come around the field. So the field would still be there. Would come around this field. Parents would come this way and then drop or pick up or drop off and then exit back onto Court Street, kind of making a big long loop for the middle school. All the yellow you see is pick up drop off area. So that is greatly increased over what is there now. And then at the elementary school, entrance would still be on Court Street, same entrance to the elementary school, but it would exit out onto Hyman Street, kind of around where School Street is. So then parents have three different, actually four different ways you can almost go from there. You've got Jefferson, you've got Court, you've got School, and then you can go out to 151. It, it's a way to get traffic out and away instead of everybody being right there on Circle Drive. Mm -hmm. Uh, you can see with the planned proposed addition for the elementary school that would kind of cut out circle drive there and eliminate that altogether. Uh, I think it would really, really help. Giving people a funnel in and out uh, at the start and the end of the school day. No concerns with kids playing on the playground because this is all gated off down here uh, at the bottom in the bottom right corner there. And so there's fencing all around that. So if there is traffic during the day and the students are out at recess, they're still kept separate. There are multiple different entrances. So there'd be the entrance up there by the addition, this one, and also this one down here. So kids, as they leave, this is like the 4K entrance right down here. As they leave, they have opportunities all along the line there on the yellow for pick up and drop off. Any questions on the site traffic flow? This was one of our favorite topics during the committees to talk about because everybody, everybody hated it. Agreed with it. And everybody, yeah, <laughs> it. yeah, we all, had, we everybody gave through the process their top three things. This was on everybody's top three. The elementary school and the, the traffic flow were all on everybody's top three. That was definitely a consensus there. So let's talk about the elementary school itself. Uh, like I said, we're looking to put in all new 5K through fourth grade classrooms. Elementary music and art spaces, special ed programming, additional special ed programming spaces, which is very much needed. Uh, flex and breakout spaces. Right now, if, if a teacher needs to take and work with one, a student one-on-one, -on -one, they can go sit out in the hall with other students walking by, going to music or a gym or whatever. Um, this would create opportunities for them to have small little rooms for them to work one-on-one -on -one with students. Uh, new restrooms, staff, mechanical storage, and other support spaces, as well as all new HVAC electrical and plumbing systems. Right now, it's, it's, it's very interesting in the elementary school, the, the heat pockets. It's warm in some parts and cold in others, and, and this would address a lot of that. And part of it is it's a 50-year-old building. Uh, and, and the one nice thing that the maintenance team has done a really, really good job of keeping the building well-maintained. So it's really just the inside that needs to be done. The whole building doesn't need to be rid on. It's really just the interior because the exterior is in very, very, very good shape. And some additional elementary middle school maintenance items, including, including the gym floor. <coughs> that is still the same gym, rubber gym floor from 1950, or 1973. 50 years old, that's the number that was in my head. Uh, and some additional items as well. Any questions on the elementary school? This is a mock-up of what the elementary school would look like. So you can see the yellow is the gutting and redoing of the entire elementary school, redoing classrooms, adding additional spaces. You can see there's you know, pods in the middle for teachers to take students one-on-one -on -one access from different classrooms. So if maybe two second graders need to work together with one teacher, they can do that in a, in a collaborative space there. Additional opportunities up at the top in the new addition. Uh, and then obviously, like I said, the yellow is all a remodel. So the, the blue at the top is the addition that was kind of over circle drive. So there'd be additional space there as well. And here is a, a mock-up of what that could look like in the front. You know, obviously staying with the same colors and everything, so it kind of matched the building as, as is today. So the other part of the uh, facilities referendum is a new athletic complex. This was obviously a very talked about portion of our uh, different committees. Um, 
what it came down to when we were looking at comparisons between keeping the field at Morrissey and just rebuilding there or building new at the school. Point number one is it's a city owned property. So the way I like to refer to it is, would you pay for your neighbor's roof that needs to be redone? If your neighbor needs to redo their roof? No, because you're not gonna get any value out of paying for their roof, right? Why is the school district gonna pay for something that's on somebody else's property? That's what it really came down to for us making a decision that if the school district would spend the money, it should be at the school grounds. And a high, high priority of our, our research was safety for students. You can see at the right there at the top right, that knife was actually found in one of the long jump pits in the sand pointed up during track practice. So you can imagine if a student was running and jumping, doing the long jump and landing on it, could, uh, could be quite an issue. There was another time during a meet, uh, an official walking near the finish line and actually stepped on another knife. Stepped on something, picked it up, and there's a knife at the finish line. It's a city park. It's open to the public. It's, it's hard to police. And if you build a new facility, you put a new field there, a new track there, you don't want people on it because people can ruin those new rubber tracks, the nice new tracks, really easily if there's anything on it but running or walking. You'd have to fence it in and you'd have to police it somehow. And then people really don't have access because it's all kind of locked up. Uh, at the bottom right is kind of a result of the hill being there, water continuously washing away at the track. That asphalt track eventually just wore away and cracked. And there's, I think I counted, I actually walked the track, counted 38 cracks in the track like that. Uh, so the, one of the things we did do is actually look at how to adjust and fix those type of issues because of all the water down there. You can actually create a, a berm, you can terrace along the hill there and actually stop the water from flowing down. But you know what that also stops? Sledding in winter. Kids can't sled because you have to terrace that, that hill and then the sled is not available anymore in the public park. So there are just so many things. Uh, like I said, a lot of safety issues, just a lot of things added up to us just recommending to move the field to the high school. Here's some pictures at the right there that we're taking during track practice. Obviously it's a public park, so kids are riding their bikes on the track during track practice, or they're playing on the uh, pole hole pits during track practice. Um, there's no immediate access for locker rooms for the, for the athletes, whether it be during track meets or track practice or during football games. Um, storm shelter wise, this is actually the considered the storm shelter for, for the park and its capacity is enough for both teams to get into. So the public, anybody who's watching wouldn't have access to an indoor safe facility during, during the storm. A lot of the other stuff we talked about, the drainage, city park, those sorts of things. Um, obviously the parking is limited and it's not for us thinking for us to invest in a public park when it's owned by somebody else, not by the school district. <laughs> So the recommendation was to move it to the high school. So this is a mock-up of what it could look like. <coughs> different light. I actually was talking to the track coach yesterday. He's like, no, I want to change this and this and this if, if it gets built. But this is a mock-up of what it could look like. So the high school is right here. And the elementary middle school is towards the bottom right here. So the one thing we want to stress is this isn't just for football and for track. Students from all gym classes from 4K all the way up through high school will have access to this, you know, when there's no snow on it. They'll be able to go out, use, it'll be handicap accessible because it's all, it's all, you know, ground level all the way around. It, it'll be accessed by everybody all throughout the district, not just the sports teams. In, in spring, when sports like baseball and softball, their fields are too wet, they can get out here. This is gonna be a turf field, water sheds away from the turf field real quick. It'll be dry, they can use that for practice outside. So like I said, it's not gonna be just for, for track and football. It also opens up the opportunities for hosting uh, sectional for track and for football as well, which are huge money makers, not only for the school, but also for the community as well. There's a lot of people in, you know, using our different businesses in town as well. Any questions on the athletic complex? Yeah, go ahead. Just the way I'm looking at this, thinking about the way it is set up now, are they moving the baseball 
Is that a baseball, baseball field over there? Uh, so this is a softball field. That's a softball field. Yeah. Yep. Shot put. This, 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 oh, okay. This is a shot. Gotcha. And this is the that's what I have in the courts. Figure so out this is actually happens. where the, the football team practices now. Okay. Right. So both for all the way from fifth grade all the way through high school, they will practice on the field now. Okay. Now I know where it's at. Is there a. I, I know a turf is beneficial for rain, stuff like that. Would it be more beneficial to go to a grass field as a cost saving? So the difference is about $500,000. So it's really not a huge, you know, it's $500,000, obviously a lot of money. I'll take $500,000 right, if I can right. save it. Um, but the whole reason why we're putting turf on here is because we have a $500,000 donation to pay for the turf. Okay. That makes sense. So we do, we do have a donation that pays for the upgrade from grass to turf, plus the maintenance of turf. Is roughly two thousand dollars a year, or once you put till it's on lawnmowers, was it till it's time to replace it? Right, but once you put people on lawnmowers, you're already you cutting that grass now. Though it's that grass is being cut now, right? right? But it, so won't it be, wouldn't be an increase. Well, it, that's just it. It'd be a decrease. Right, it'd go from about twenty thousand dollars to about eighteen or eight uh, two thousand dollars because the maintenance of one of these, and so I'm, the difference you're saving up over time will then pay for if you're getting the field donated. That's a big deal. Yeah. Yep, and then and that saving and maintenance will pay for the maintenance of the or the whatever it's called when you have to redo the field from twelve to fifteen right. minutes or whatever that is. Yep, that's all I have. Any questions on any of those? No. Okay. So here's what. Oh, went too far. Here's what it comes down to as you break it down for the facilities referendum question two. Elementary school renovations in addition, 11.2 million. Elementary middle school site circulation, about 1.9, Dex Circle Drive. The new athletic complex for all of our students to use uh, is 4.2, and that doesn't include the $500,000 donation for the upgrading at the turf. And the elementary middle school maintenance that was on one of those lists was about 1.7 and a little bit of maintenance at the high school for 200,000. It comes to that 19.3. So I talked about we started at almost $40 million because there's a lot of things that need to be done. But one of the most important things to us as a committee was your taxes. I pay taxes too. I want to make sure it stayed, stayed low. So the high school comes off the books in April. So we're no longer paying off the high school. And the goal of our committee was to get to a referendum capital amount where the taxes would stay the same, where the taxes wouldn't go up, even though with a brand new referendum. So that's what we did. Uh, in a couple of slides, I'll actually show you a little bit of breakdown, a little bit better breakdown. I'll show you the differences. Uh, but that was our goal, and that's why we came to the 19.3. And that's why we, we gave ourselves a limit of $20 million to stay within that budget. Here's just a proposed schedule of what it would look like. If, it, if approved in April, nothing gets done right away because you've got to design, you've got to bid out, and then you've got to start the work. Any of the work at the elementary school would be done, the interior work within the existing elementary school would be done in summer. It would not be done during the school day, obviously. You don't want to interrupt the kids there. The whole point is to make it better for them not to interrupt their day while they're in class. So here's just some, some proposed schedules of when things would begin. Big thing of this too is to keep it local. We want bidding, and if there is a contractor in the area that can do the work and is obviously gives a acceptable bid, we want to give the work to a local contractor. We don't want to be hiring some big firm from out of the area and giving them all the money. We want to keep it local as much as possible. So that, that's a big portion of this. Um, so we ask for as much. You know, obviously, if passed, we ask for as much local bidders participation as possible. So here's where I was talking about with the with the way the taxes break down. So current debt, when paid off, paying it off in 2021, is 3.99. The high school is paid off in 2022, and our goal is to keep the the rate right there at the same rate as it was in 2021. So the taxes, if if this is approved, the yellow is the operational referendum, and the blue is the facilities referendum. Obviously, you're not paying for something unless you know shovels in the ground. So you're not paying for the the facilities referendum right away, it comes later. So as other debt falls off, this was an energy grant we had from a few years ago? 2015. 2015, that is now gonna be paid off. 
And once it's paid off, the, the facilities referendum can take over that, that large amount of uh, the tax bill. But you can see there that the rate stays below $4 all the way across. That was, like I said, that was a big goal of ours. Any questions on that piece? Right. And I kept talking about two questions. Here they are. Question one talks about the facilities referendum. It talks about the spending per year for the next five years. It's a five-year limit on that operational referendum. Yes, no question. Question two talks about the facilities, all the other things, you know, the elementary school, the circle drive, the athletic complex. That's all part of question number two. That's a yes, no question as well. So they're completely separate. And that's our last community presentation. If, if you didn't have any more questions today or if you go home and you think of a question, I'm actually gonna hang out at Playmore tomorrow evening. I'm gonna, have, I'm gonna bring those boards that row and just kind of sit there and ask, answer any questions if people have them as well. Um, but any other questions for us today, please that us here. If, if one of the referendums fails, is there a, a, a plan to go back and revisit it? And you can't for a year. You can't for a year, okay. Um, by state statute, we can only have two questions, two uh, referendum questions per <laughs> year. Okay. And we have our two questions this April, one being our operational and one being our facilities. Okay. Good. What would happen if the facilities one would pass and not the operational one? Can does one support the other? No, they're two separate entities. Um, if operational doesn't pass, we saw how that will impact our children. Um, if facilities doesn't pass, we see how that impacts our facilities, but they, at no point do they cross each other because they're two separate. Okay. Right. Well, thank you very much guys for coming in and asking good questions. Again, if you have additional questions, feel free. Uh, Stop by Playmore. Have a drink. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Thank you guys. Thank you. Or call me at school. Or, you know. <laughs> or our website. ChillNSD.community. Yeah. Uh, drinks on better. The drinks on better. Playmore is a Thank you. Yep. You're welcome. Have a good night. Thank you. Thank you. No. No. All right.